today as co-chair of the Land Stands Defence Committee, but unfortunately just after a week ago, a sudden vote was sprung on us at a meeting, and people voted in favour that the organisation supports the Olympics, but will resist any encroachment on the Land Stands, and that this conference will be boycotted. Fortunately, as a member of the Nuclear Change Action Group, Counter Olympics Network and Games Monitor, I've got every right to stand here and talk to you. So, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Um, the next thing they hear us about common rights on the lakes and lemon stands. Um, for those who don't live in Walton Forest, there's an area around the Olympic um, Park which is designated as the Northern Olympic Fringe. And this is an area that essentially is right for development. And the Northern Olympic Fringe idea is that the area will be, as they call it, regenerated, redevelopment, gentrification, better development, regeneration. And they're starting to consult on that area of action plan in March. It's been in May, it should have already been out. A lot of that area consists of lakes and marshes, which are part of the extensive system of water meadows along the Lee Valley, the whole length of the valley, until the Middle Ages, when the water power and the developing um, need for manufactured items like nails, copper, whatever, and led to a series of water mills uh, which were operated mostly by the tide, in fact, between mill fields and lakes and marshes, the area known as Temple Mills, because they were owned by the Knights Templar in that area. And all of that area, there, there were about, I think, 10 or 11 mills at the time of the Doomsday Book. So the whole area is really has developed based on the valley, based on the water, based on the meadows. In the meadows, during the summer, hay was grown and then taken off in the autumn at the end of the growing season. After that, the local parishioners were allowed to graze their cattle. So there were lammas rights, which was grazing rights, or SOs as I think is the Norman term. Um, those common rights were um, administered by the Norman manors, essentially, baronial manors, up until 1898. And at that point, it was realized that with the coming of the railway, Leighton no longer was a farming community, but was a commuter town. And the big need was for open space and recreation grounds, cricket pitches, and this newfangled game of football, which was catching on rapidly on Lakeley Marshes, and was sort of spreading its way north, eventually reaching Brazil um, about 30 years later. Anyway, um, so, so the local people petitioned for the rights of Lammas grazing and hay grown to be commuted, which means exchanged for the right of free <coughs> public access in perpetuity for purposes of relaxation and recreation, and that was passed in 1905. So the common rights were exchanged for the rights of free access in perpetuity. Perpetuity lasted until 1976, when rather a lot of places and marshes were compulsorily purchased by the new Lee Valley Regional Park Authority. And I have to say that from the point of view of people who are trying to save lakes and marshes from development, the Park Authority is at least as big an enemy yeah. as the ODA, LDA. They really are dreadful. And Walton Forest Council are dreadful in colluding with everything that's going on. So we're up against quite a lot of different pressures and forces. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, as far as lakes and marshes is concerned, the bit that's still owned by the council where the covenant still exists has got temporarily relocated allotments at one end. The rest is being grubbed up, reseeded, turned into football pitches, new pavilion, new car park, out of bounds for most of this summer. The southern bit of lakes and marshes between the railway line and Leebridge Road, where the golf course is, the golf course is being grubbed up. That's going to be fenced off. It's going to be used by the Camping and Caravan and Club of Great Britain as a campsite. Um, minimum stay two nights, £45 a night for a tent. Um, during the whole of the summer for the Olympics. North of that, half of Porter's Field, which is the area north of Leadbridge Road, is already covered by the Lee Valley Regional Park's riding centre, which is fenced off from public use and even has electric fencing and barbed wire around it. The one remaining part behind the hideous ice street to the north um, is known as Porter's Field Meadow. And Porter's Field Meadow is where the ODA are now trying to put in two three-storey high buildings to house basketball courts with a huge black tarmac car park, access road, security gate, high fencing, utility block, the list goes on. Um, for those of you who want to know more, I am going to be at the environment workshop this afternoon and I'd, I'd be happy to go into more detail. Um, 
other than that, if you can come along at 7 o'clock in the evening on the 7th of February, which is a Tuesday, that is when Waltham Forest Planning Committee will be deciding whether or not <coughs> this is a matter of such national importance that the London plan can be thrown out the window to allow this to be built on metropolitan open land adjacent to a site of major, <coughs> uh, major conservation importance. That's important. Thank you. I'll leave that.